sophomore, Dallin Hayden. Dallin Hayden was born on June 22, 2003. His hometown is listed as Memphis, Tennessee, which has a population of approximately 633,104, making it the second most populous city in Tennessee after Nashville. Son of Chatoya and Aaron Hayden, Dallin, a middle child, has two brothers, Cullen and Chase. Dallin's father played football at Tennessee and in the NFL for San Diego, Green Bay, and Philadelphia. Indianapolis, Bennett and Saragusa make the tackle. Part of San Diego's mod squad. It's Hayden again. And a first down at the 38. Gain of 10. Brother Chase played collegiately at Arkansas and Illinois. He attended Christian Brothers High School in Memphis, Tennessee, and played varsity football as a captain under coach Thomas McDaniel. A multi-sport athlete, Dallin also played basketball and ran track and field. The following is taken from Dallin Hayden's Class of 2022 Christian Brothers High School Senior Spotlight, written by Dallin's head football coach. Since his first time stepping foot on our campus, Dallin has been a model of consistency, dedication, hard work, and toughness in the classroom and on the field of competition. Dallin challenged himself and grew into a two-time Mr. Football recipient in the toughest division of football in Tennessee. but his commitment to athletics never became priority over his academic success. Additionally, his diverse friend group within school shows his genuine personality amongst his peers. He epitomizes everything one imagines in a brother's boy. Two-time Mr. Football Tennessee, football captain, 2020-2021 All-State First Team, 2020 Max Preps All-American, 2020 Max Preps State Player of the Year, 2020 Region MVP, All-Region Team All Four Years, 2021 Sports Illustrated All-American, 2021 4x200 Track State Champion, and National Honor Society. Dallin was a four-star recruit who rated among the top 25 running backs nationally in the class of 2022. He was named the Offensive Player of the Year for Division II 3A West after rushing for 2,002 yards and 33 touchdowns in 2021. In 23 games over his junior and senior seasons, Hayden amassed 4,012 yards, 174.4 yards per game, and scored 57 touchdowns. He had back-to-back 2,000-yard -back seasons as a junior and senior. He was named a top 10 high school running back in 2021 by Max Preps. He had a final stat line of 2,010 yards on 232 carries with 24 touchdowns as a junior. Our third Memphis Sports Zone High School football game of the week featured the city's top rivalry. MUS making their first appearance in 2020 facing a Christian Brothers team already off to a 2-0 start. In this one, the Owls wasted no time getting their season started going deep on their first offensive play. Edwin Shy found Clarkson show for a 68-yard connection that led to the game's first touchdown giving the Owls a 7-0 lead. Things remained that way until late in the second quarter when the Purple Wave made their move. Brandon Acuff gave Christian Bells a first down in Owl territory, and just a few plays later, Dalton Hayden gave the Wave its first points. The short yardage plunge made it a tie ball game at the half. In the third quarter, Hayden and his offensive line starting to take control. His second touchdown gave the Purple Wave a 14-7 lead. From that point on, he carried the load and Owl defenders with him. Hayden, the workhorse, 33 carries, 258 yards, and all four Christian Brothers touchdowns. 
his second 200-yard game of the season as a Purple Wave ran away to a 3-0 start with a 28-7 win. When it comes to the best teams to watch in 2021, Christian Brothers ranks high on the list. I think we probably have overall better team speed than we have had in the past. Um, you know, we've got a lot of experience returning, but we've also got some you know key spots that we got to figure out quickly uh, who takes those positions. On offense, senior quarterback Asher Struther will run the show. He'll be one of the top QBs in the area, and in the backfield, they'll feature one of the most dynamic players in the state in running back Dallin Hayden. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster, more confident, smarter. Um, you know, I look for him to have a you know extremely successful year. But we, like I said, we've got good receivers, we've got a good quarterback. I think we've got a chance to put people in a lot more conflict, and uh, it doesn't all have to rest on his shoulders. So um, it's gonna be exciting. On defense, the Purple Wave bring back five starters with the amount of talent returning on both sides of the ball. Christian Brothers could be poised for a big season. Defensively, we feel like our secondary is going to be a strength for us this year, which was uh, kind of a growing year last year for them. Very strong at linebacker and young on the defensive line. Still tr looking to gel our offensive line and kind of figure out the rotation there, but we've got some good potential there with Patrick Kudis and Ben Cavanis leading the way for us there. You know, when you got a guy carrying the ball like Dallin Hayden and you got a quarterback like Ashton Struther, you got a pretty good shot. So, uh, you know, a lot can happen between now and November, but uh, we're going to just keep trying to stack days on top of days and keep getting better. We've got great chemistry, uh, great work ethic amongst the whole team, so it's just a lot of fun to be out here. Down, K. Hayden. Garrett, Andrew, Hayes. The Tom Nix Award, given in the memory of the legendary CPHS coach and educator, is presented to the senior who has excelled as a student athlete during his four years at Christian Brothers High School. The Tom Nix Award is presented to Dallin K. Hayden. Now, the recruiting process. Now, Dallin, you're, you're out of Tennessee. You're down south. You got a lot of, you know, obviously there's a lot of football down there, and there's schools, big-time schools that were recruiting you. We want to hear about the recruiting process. This is what we like to talk to with the commits. Like, with Ohio State, what, what was it that drew you there? How was it when you came to the to campus? What drew you to it? What, what clicked for you and said, hey, you know, like this, this could actually be a really good fit? Outside of just being a successful program, what was the recruiting process like? Oh, uh, well, I had to say from the day they offered, they made me feel like a priority. You know, uh, didn't stop hearing from them. Uh, still don't stop hearing from them, you know. Hear from Coach Day and Coach Alfred quite a bit. And uh, I just felt like out of the schools that were recruiting me, they were recruiting me the hardest. And um, they not only, like, they were just telling me they want me, but, like, me and Coach Alfred did a couple of Zooms, like, going over some details and, like, how he, like, plans to develop me in, uh, I'd say he had the best plan for me. Can you, can you repeat that? Is your head swimming yet or are you settling pretty nice out there? Uh, I feel like I'm getting better each and every day. Uh, I'd probably say last month I was struggling, you know, obviously that's expected because new playbook, new, new system, and, but I feel like I'm picking it up fine. What's the biggest progression, the biggest difference in playing out here compared to what you're used to? Sorry. I feel like you got to know way more football. And uh, Coach Offer's done a really good job of teaching me football. Like, even like during the recruiting process, you know, he talked ball with me. Like, I learned a lot from him, like, in these few months that I've learned before. I mean, I came from a good foundation, obviously, because my dad played in the NFL. My brother plays at the college level. But Coach Offer, one of the best teachers in the business. Coach Alford says you're you're going full speed. He likes that about you. Do you have to slow yourself down a little bit at times? Yes, sir. Uh, we had a walkthrough yesterday, and uh, I was kind of going too fast. Coach today told me to slow down. Uh, that's that's kind of always been like an issue for me. Like all I know is like go full speed. But I'm learning to slow it down now. Uh, what are your impressions of the other three guys? Uh, I 
uh, they're all really unique players. Um, I, I can learn like something from each and every one of them, and I feel like I'm just glad to be in the room with those guys because it's making me better. I feel like. What? Yeah, said, uh, he was impressed by the way you've learned the uh, playbook, in quote, uh, as quickly. Uh, how how uh, imperative was that to you to get that done? Oh, it's, it's imperative because if you don't know what you're doing, there's no way you can play or any of that. So you got to know what you're doing. So every day, like, when I met with Coach Alford or Coach Riley Jeffers, uh, i take notes, and then when I'll be in the dorm, I'll be studying my notes for, like, an hour or a week. Hey, Dylan, what do you think sets you apart from those other three? You look at those three guys, and there's something different about each one of them, you know? What sets you apart from those, do you think? What have you noticed? I feel like I'm always at full speed, and I feel like we're just all different, you know? I can't, I've only been here, like, once, so I don't really know yet, but... Yeah. I feel like I have my own style of running and I feel like Coach Offers is going to develop that even better. How would you describe your running style to people? I'm um, always full speed, uh, always trying to get downhill. Uh, I can try to try to outrun, uh, make a move. I just feel like my benefit is always being full speed. Dan, was there an advantage to coming into this situation when you have three guys since it seems like Trivion, Evan, and Mayan are going to get the carries, right? You know you can sort of go things here at your own pace, but obviously you want to play and compete, but is there a benefit for you to just be able to learn from them and, and do things at your own pace? Uh, I just feel like learning from those three, three good backs will only make me better, so yeah. It takes a little pressure off them. Yes, sir. What's it been well, like only so three. far? There's only three. I mean, you're, you're almost in the look already. Do you feel that way? Yes, sir. Uh, I just feel like I got to keep getting better, keep second days, and I'll do something. A month, a month under your belt. I mean, are you feeling a little overwhelmed, intimidated, maybe just coming in into this scenario? You know, uh, from from high school, and now all of I a mean, sudden, boom, you're on a huge stage like Ohio State. I mean, I was nervous at first. I'd probably say last month I was most nervous because I didn't know I didn't know that many plays. I'm gonna be real, but like, I feel like I've gotten better with that. It's kind of slowing down just a little bit, not all the way, but I feel like it's getting better. What's more intimidating, that or having to answer questions from all these uh, reporters standing around like this? I'd probably say that part out there, <laughs> for sure. you used to this, huh? I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> What's the best advice you got before you before you came this way? What was the best advice you got from back home about uh, you know, how, how to handle this new business? My dad just always said, you know, keep, keep the goal up front, but, like, have fun with it. Like, don't just take it serious. Like, take it serious, but, like, like when you're outside these buildings, like, have fun, but, like, keep the goal the goal. What made you want to be a Buckeye? Uh, I'd probably say Coach Day and Coach Offer, for, for sure. Having a, a, you know, a dad who has a background that he did, is you feel that's helped cultivate you to get to this point? Uh, that's definitely helped. You know, he's been, been training with him since I was young, and we've been doing stuff that, Know, like younger kid probably can do and yeah it's, it's definitely prepared me for life. Dallin, did you get a chance to work with Tony Offer on the field before you got here? You're in the uh, so no sir. So um, how'd your first practice go with having a position coach who's literally trying to kill you during drills? I mean it's, it's good you know everything coach Offer is doing is it's for a reason for sure like obviously his track record all the backs he's coached uh, I've done very well, so he obviously knows what he's doing, and I just try to take his coaching to make me a better player. Was there a moment that it became clear to you that Ohio State was the right place for you? Yeah, I knew, like, most of the time my recruiting process. Like, I'd probably say after after the OB, I definitely knew it, this was the place for me. You know, I kind of already – it was between either here or Notre Dame. Everybody probably knows that. Um, but I feel like here – Coach Offer was just different, and his plan to develop me was better than anybody else. Do you enjoy that your first game is going to be against Notre Dame? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, it'll be a good game, and uh, it'll, it'll be good. Alan, kind of an off-topic question, but with your foundation and, and the charity work that you do, have you found a way to try to work towards that in Columbus yet? Uh, I actually haven't, but I do plan on doing that. Um, with the people back home or like see if they can connect with somebody here. But yeah, I definitely want to continue to do that. What's the focus of that foundation? 
Oh, so it's uh, coaching for literacy. Growing up, uh, I used to used to struggle with like reading comprehension, but like my parents got the resources I needed to like help me get better at that skill. So last throughout high school, every touchdown I scored, a certain amount of money was raised for kids who can't like afford those resources to get help. So yeah. Yeah. What, what, what did you finally figure out about? what you were dealing with there. I mean, because some kids just kind of get lost in the shuffle there, right? Yeah. I mean, is it more identifying? Yeah, it's youngsters definitely. Who have that uh, situation? It's definitely identifying because I kind of knew, like, at a younger age, and then my mom and dad took action immediately, got me the help I needed, and it definitely worked. So yeah. this is something I'm very passionate about. Were you trying to start a Memphis to Ohio State pipeline? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure, yeah. No, y'all, uh, we saw, uh, we got a uh, Brock Glenn. So, yeah. What about uh, just growing up in Memphis, playing there? What, how did that help prepare you for Ohio State? Uh, it helped me specifically because I feel like the high school I went to, we kind of run it like a college program. Like we lift, we run, and we practice pretty hard. So I feel like it prepared me better than like any other like high school in Memphis could have. And your favorite, your favorite part of the Graceland tour is? Believe it or not, I haven't, I haven't been to Graceland. <laughs> I'm missing it. I'm curious. I saw you uh, tweeting about Duke basketball a lot during the spring. Have they converted you to an Ohio State basketball fan yet? Uh, <laughs> probably not, to be honest. I've always been a Duke fan. How did, how did that come about? I've, I grew up a huge fan of Coach K. I feel like he's the greatest college coach ever, so I've always been a fan of his. What do you think's going to happen there, though, with him now stepping aside? I, mean, I feel I, like you think a lot of the guys like you are gonna fade. And, uh, you know what I mean? From may, the, maybe because you know. More for Coach K than Duke. Yeah, maybe because like obviously the new guys taking over for a legend, but you gotta give anybody time to build their program. But yeah, it'll be it'll be tough without Coach K. Do you enjoy just like watching different sports and kind of taking things from different sports and applying it to football? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, I love watching. If I'm not watching football, I'm always watching basketball, NBA, college. Uh, LeBron is like huge motivation. His his greatness, like just it just like motivates anybody that's playing sports. I feel like. Are there any football players, any running backs that you look up to, try to model your game after? Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, probably my. He's been my favorite back for a while now. Uh, just like his ability to get downhill, finish through contact, and he runs with a purpose, I feel like. So did that partially inspire your decision to become a Buckeye? Uh, I mean, yes, but like I I knew I wanted to be here because uh, Coach Offer, and I know he developed guys like Zeke for one year, uh, J.K. Dobbins, Mike Weather, and uh, the list just goes on and on. Can I ask you a weird one? Who, who are you going to be living with this season? Not uh, just in camp, but like during the year. Like my dorm? You're, yeah, like your dorm okay, roommates, uh, yeah. We're in the Neo dorms. I'm rooming with uh, Kojo Antwi and uh, Caleb Brown okay. and Kai Saunders, three receivers. <laughs> okay. How'd, that, how'd you end up with three receivers? Uh, we just kind of talked about it, like, because we all didn't know who we were going to room with. Yeah. And the summer guys actually had to live in Neo dorms. Like the early enrollees, they're at the Griffs. So okay. when I found out Caleb and Kojo were uh, – gonna be living in the same place I am I was like I was like y'all want a room together I was like yeah let's do it and it's been great so can't okay complain. but when you like you're you're here all the time you're working out your lifting place like when you're back at your place like do you want to talk about football do you not want to talk about football I mean you guys obviously care about it but do you yeah. do you sometimes need to like clear your head and get away yes and no uh, I just know people back home they're gonna be curious, you know. Yeah. They kind of look up to me because I know a lot of kids want to play at a high level, and like, so I don't mind answering questions, but like, I don't like talking about it like all the yeah. time. Like sometimes I just want to be like, like outside the pads, like not just yeah. a football player. For real. Yeah, so. Okay. So you like a messy roommate? You a clean roommate? What do you like? Oh no, our room clean. Me, me and Caleb pretty clean. So okay, that's good. I was messy. Uh, <laughs> clean is better. Is there like a guilt, a food that you love to eat that like is your guilty pleasure? A sweet thing or like a fast food or something? Canes. Can- I feel like I feel like when I got here, 
June 6th. I ate canes almost every day. That, did you have canes back at home? No, no. sir. We didn't. We have uh, Zaxby's. Okay. Oh, I so, love Zaxby's. Yeah, Zaxby's too. good. But is that canes right by here? It's so tempting, man. Yeah. I mean, like, you go past. I When I moved here, I ate it every day, too. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, I've, I've uh, expanded my food tree. Like, okay. Uh, it's a place called Adriatico. Yeah. They like know us. <laughs> Me and uh, some other teammates that are freshmen, they know our names by heart. They're like, y'all come here almost every day. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's good. You got to build up the, the body weight, exactly. right? Get ready for. Where are you at the weight you want to be at? Like that Nick wants you at? Or? Yes, sir. I made my uh, body weight goal, but okay. uh, if I can gain, of course, I want to. But yeah. I think I just let Coach Mick and them handle that. Yeah. Very Where are you good. at right now? Uh, 195. Okay. So, it's hard like you want to be powerful but you want to keep your speed right it's a different balance for everybody right yeah you mentioned you're not just all football all the time what about off the field at ohio state kind of made you interested in ohio state uh real life wednesdays uh coach day uh presented that to me and my family we were very impressed with that because uh no other school had that i don't think and yeah that's probably the most impressive off the field what are you majoring in here i'm majoring in business do you have any visions of what you want to do with that long term? Uh, not right now, but I have thought like once I'm done playing, I kind of want to work for like a football team, like get in the office, like work my way up to like a general manager. Oh, that's very cool. What do you just envision for your football career? Just being the best version of myself I can be and always uh, making improvements to do my you, game. Do you have any specific goals for your freshman year or just your Ohio State, your first two free years here? Just uh, compete every day, get my all in practice, and like I said, be the best version of me and just block out all the outside noise. You feel like if you do the things you need to do, that it's ultimately going to work out in your favor? Yes, sir, for sure. Second and a yard to go. Hayden. And Stroud, who normally does not use his legs, does here. Plenty of time in the pocket. That's been the issue all night. And there is Harrison again. Another first down for Marvin Jr. That was going to be something else for them, but Ohio State just denied them. Here goes Hayden again. Flying around a little bit, Timmy. Inside the 30, down to the 28 on the stretch play. Touched on it during halftime. We Going were prophetic there. Play for the miss. And here's Hayden. Hayden. The distance. Maybe not. I think he was pushed out at the three. Oh. There it is. Touchdown, Hayden. That was his drive. That's his first career touchdown, but he got to over 100 yards before the two guys on the depth chart ahead of him did. Touchdown. Hayden will get a carry. Hayden with a burst. Hayden in the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. 14 yards as the freshman hits Pater. Good burst from Hayden. Watch as they're going to bring the motion across. And then, Gus, there's just nobody out here. There's just nobody in the support area. And Hayden's able to just look at that and say, okay, I can put one on there. It's definitely yards after the catch. Hayden. He scored a touchdown, the freshman in the game and running back now. And they'll give it to the freshman. People in the stands that day. But uh -huh. That was a top 10 matchup between those two teams. Remember how well Indiana had played. Stroud. They stay on the ground as Hayden. Talk about getting home against Illinois. They have to defeat Nebraska today. Here's a handoff, Hayden, and Hayden with a first, down the sideline, out of bounds, inside the 20. Bryson Bonds knocks him out of play, but it's a 20-yard gain. With this run, you're going to go over the 300-yard mark, and a nice little cut right there from Dallin Hayden. He finds the seam, and he's able to get vertical. Williams went down in the first half. 606 yards of total offense for Ohio State once again. Hendon Hooker at Tennessee, Blake Quorum at Michigan. You know, I, and I've always thought, Gus, you need try to retake this lead. And Dallin Hayden does just that. 
the true freshman. Boy, that was close as Hayden takes it ahead for a first down. Looked like that right foot was very close to being out of bounds. Henderson's been dealing with a nagging injury, but look at Hayden. Nearly kept his balance. It's a first down Ohio State. He is going to be something. Run two by the right side of the offensive line. Hayden squeaks right in behind. Hayden behind Lawson right in. His second touchdown. Dallin Hayden. Pretty decent coverage and a play or two later. Dallin Hayden finds the end zone. Hayden inside the 10. Kept his foot again. Gets in. Dallin Hayden. 13-yard touchdown run. His third of this second half. He has arrived. The true freshman from Memphis. Great job by the left side of the offensive line, too. Good to see number 79, Dewan Jones, give a little. Still affected by that injury. Second and four play action, Stroud's going to go to the backfield. Here's Hayden now, another first down for Ohio State. Lean on that front. Hayden, look at him go again. He got a nice block on the right side. And he goes for 18 more yards. Got 135 on the day. Ohio State 43, Maryland 30, they won. I don't care. Nothing about yesterday matters this Saturday. Now, I'll tell you one specific thing that matters that I saw yesterday. Mayan Williams, out. Travion Henderson, hurt to the point where I'm surprised they played him. Ryan Day said he had a good week of practice. He looked crippled to me. And so he's in there playing to start, and then they wisely get him out of there because he can't function. And they put in Dallin Hayden. You say whomst? Ohio State fans know him. That would be about the extent of how many people really would know about him nationally. 146 yards, three touchdowns. That's called depth. That's quality depth. That's why you recruit him. That's why you rep him in practice. And that's why you don't stop paying attention after your ones and twos run through the line. Because the later you get in the year, the more guys get banged up. The more those, those critical last-minute recruiting decisions, who do we take? What is our eval on this guy? It all ends up playing out in that form. You, no one on any preview magazine publication or editorial board cared about that kid preseason. I hadn't heard him mentioned on Ohio State boards by midseason. But there he was yesterday, and he was ready to go. And so who knows what their running back situation is going into this week. I am sure or virtually certain, that everything Ohio State's doing and everything Michigan is doing is geared towards getting themselves prepared health-wise for this game. Alan Hayden, number five running back. To be honest, I actually really didn't know much about the Big Ten because I grew up in the South and SEC was everything, but Ohio State always sticks out no matter how you look at it. And when I took that visit here and got recruited here, it just interests me to come here and the tradition and then everything they do with my position specifically, it was hard to turn down. I would just say the preparation and practice and, and everything Coach Alfred has us do is, is just awesome. Gets us ready to play and he always tells us you never know when your numbers going to get called. So that's why practice is so important and I, I truly believe that 100%. Hayden, inside the 10 Freshman from Memphis. Um, third one was uh, kind of crazy. I actually followed my blocks and got to the right spot, but like it was a few defenders there. But like I just kept my feet going and it just carried me into the end zone. And my man Dewan had a big block while I was running. <laughs> he put whoever that was behind me. He 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 destroyed him.
During the 2022 season, Dallin played in 10 games as a true freshman and earned his first varsity O letter. He was the team's third leading rusher in 2022 with 553 yards and a five yards per carry average off 111 carries and five touchdowns. Also caught four passes for 23 yards. What are your takeaways of Dallin and Chip from the spring? I'm sorry? What are your takeaways from Dallin and Chip during the spring? Yeah, I think that Dallin has grown, he's maturing. Um, you know, every single day, again, you know, you're talking, it's still his first spring. He's never been through that. He played some in the fall, but he's still maturing. He's changing his body. You know, he's finally learning the game, and I think he's starting to understand um, just how important it is to study the game. And when I say study the game, I don't mean watch highlight videos. I mean actually study the game and what's going on um, and taking care of his body. You know, Dallin's a tough kid, and you can watch him gain 8, 10, 12 pounds, whatever it is. So, um, so he's been he's been he's been really good in the meetings as well. Um, he's answering things very very affirmatively and, and the way he's playing and um, so he's growing up as he should be and he's maturing and like I said I said earlier Chip's, Chip's, Chip's a very mature player and uh, it's like being with a grown man in the world. Does so maybe have a chance to be able, maybe the deepest room you've had in terms of guys from to top to bottom? Yeah. When healthy, yeah. And when when not when not healthy, well, roll the dice. But uh, when healthy from top to bottom, I would yeah, I would like I would say it's probably the deepest room. Does that give you ease, or does it? I mean, as you just said when healthy, because yeah, I mean, a year ago it was kind of the same thing. Yeah, I mean, you say it gives you ease. I don't know if you're ever at ease. You know, truth be told, but um, but when healthy, I, I, I like the room we got when healthy. When you're evaluating guys, are you looking at hey, this we could use this guy in this way and this guy in this way, or are you just trying to build as much depth? as Right possible? now, I'm just trying to build depth because we want guys that are three down players, and everybody can do everything. Obviously, as you, as you move through things, some guys are going to be better than others in certain things. But, but right now, it's just really training guys to do everything that we do, do the best of their abilities, and, um, and enhance them wherever we can enhance them. Um, we haven't started putting packages together, as I think is a direct answer to your question. If those haven't been put together. But as we get into the summer and the fall, we'll do those. Someone so early like that? I'm you, sorry? With it being so early, do you prepare Dallin to say like, there may not be 100 carries for you next season? Oh, I haven't thought. I haven't even talked about it like that. I mean, I'm just preparing our guys to get better every day individually, and then obviously holistically as our as our offensive unit, and we'll figure all that out as we move down the down the down the road. Seems like Dallin. We talk about guys gaining weight every offseason. It's one of our favorite things to talk about this spring. But like, I gained a bunch too. <laughs> we all have. With, with Dallin, it seems like that play, that weight is translated to maybe a little bit more power. Yeah, that's that? what you want. That's what you're hoping for. And, and I still think it can be better. And he knows that. Just his uh, leg strength and lower body strength. And as we're running through contact and running through tackles. And, and um, but, but it's gotten better. And it's not where it needs to be yet. Um, but we're also not playing yet. So, so that'll continue to grow as, as him and Ian Nick and the strength staff continue to uh, build that. I know that you're not trying to just hand out compliments, but like, no, I for, do not. For him to be able to do what he did, particularly in the Maryland game, and not be where he probably should have been with his weight, does that does that make it a little bit more impressive that he was able to do things like that last year? No, I mean, I I expect him to do that. That's why we put him out there, you know. And, and um, I, you know, he did. He had a he had a he had a, a heck of a game for us looking back but but we put him out there those expectations for, to be able to play and, and now it's just all about enhancing him and getting him better can i just ask you um this is like kind of break down those five like down trey my chip will kind of make him different what makes him unique is running wow i mean how how much time you got as much you know, as you want to give no me. i'm not gonna give you that much <laughs> but um <laughs> no i'm gonna ruin my mom's good name um <laughs> No, I, you know, they all are different. You know, I think Trey, you know, obviously has some, some issues, some deals where he can run away from people. And when he hits a, when he hits a crease in the seam, he, he, he can really go. So I think uh, that's that's something he provides. You know, Dallin's got, I think, really, really good vision. Uh, he, can, he can kind of feel his way and see some things. You know, um, mine's probably more powerful than all of them. The two I just spoke about. Um, you know, I think that Chip brings a combination of some power and speed because he's faster than mine. So they all bring. Then you have Evan, as no one's really talking about because he's been out for so long. 
But you know, he's got he's got the ability to go out and run routes and catch the ball. Trey really catches the ball well. Um, Evan catches the ball probably better than the most of the other guys. So they all have different things that they provide. And, uh, but at the end of the day, the goal is to get them all prepared to play three downs if we need it to be. And if we want to package them, then we have the you know we have the build to do that as well. But um, they all bring different things, and, and um, they all three bring different personalities in the room as well, and, and, and their approach to things. Um, um, but the one thing they all are is they all are very competitive guys. During the 2023 season, Dallin played in three games and had 110 yards and a 5.8 yard average per carry off 19 attempts and one touchdown. His one touchdown came in the game versus Purdue on October 14, 2023. Now, this was something I, I talked to Tony Alford, the running backs coach this week and asked him, you know, they're traditionally a wide zone type team, but you watch these guys on tape, they're having a lot of success with these gap scheme plays. Kate Stover does a great job collapsing the edge on the front side. You see the two big offensive linemen pull around there and give Dallin Hayden an incredible opportunity for an explosive run on first and ten. And with his position coach on the podium, he was catching balls behind him, trying to prove he's got the hands. See if they throw to him. As they say, the more you can do. Exactly. Scott in motion on first and goal. The give up the middle. Dallin Hayden. Hayden ball carrier. Not going to get there. Yanni Karloftis, younger brother of the Super Bowl champion George with the Chiefs, makes the tackle. Yeah, and they just get big Caden Curry going downhill. It's a great job there by Yanni Karloftis. Just, you know, a guy with an older brother that's in the NFL, he's going to play some physical football, so he flies in there and able to, to stop Ohio State short. Hayden stood up again, but he lunges forward Hayden and gets it. Dallin, Hayden, called into action and gets another Buckeye touchdown, 26 to nothing. Dallin Hayden was also an academic All Big Ten honoree in order to be eligible for academic All Big Ten selection. A student athlete must be on a varsity team as verified by being on the official squad list as of November 1st and must be enrolled full-time at the institution for a minimum of 12 months. The student athlete must also carry a cumulative grade point average of 3.0 or higher. Ohio State's record in both 2022 and 2023 was 11 wins, two losses. Michigan has a new running backs coach. Tony Alford is leaving Ohio State after nine years with the Buckeyes, switching sides in the rivalry. He replaces Mike Hart, who departs after three seasons back in Ann Arbor. Sharon Moore announcing the move and calling Alford an elite running backs coach. Nobody will have opinions about that, not at all. We do have some breaking news, according to Matt Zinitz of 24-7 Sports, reporting that Ohio State's Tony Alford is heading to Michigan to be the new running back coach. Guys, if you have questions in the chat, um, obviously that's a big deal for a lot of different reasons, right? I mean, you're talking about how how often do you see a coach go from one school to the other? Last guy I could think of, Tom, you would know this, Al Washington, right? Oh, yeah. um, going from Michigan to Ohio State. Uh, now you have vice versa, Tony Alford, who's one of the most yeah. respected coaches in the country at that position. Well, let let Tom Cook here. He's he's uh, familiar with Tony Alford. I, I, you know, what what type of recruiter I guess is leaving Columbus and headed to Ann Arbor? He recruited uh, Donovan Edwards pretty hard, and uh, looks like now he's going to finally get to coach him. But um, known Tony a long time, terrific recruiter, great human being. Um, you know, I first met him when he was at Notre Dame before making the jump to Ohio State, and uh, tremendous, tremendous recruiter. He is all about relationships, great ball coach, but for him, it's all about the relationships. He's a high level recruiter. Uh, he's hit the portal hard. He's doing it at the high school level. Um, and he was a big, big addition for Ohio state uh, over the last couple of years. And um, I think he's going to do a phenomenal job at Michigan. I think this is a really, really good hire. And I think he's going to have that uh, running back room cooking for uh, the next couple of years. What was it like for you when you found out that coach Alford was leaving? Oh um, man, it was, it was tough. You know, coach Alford was, a big part of why I came to Ohio State. So to see him leave was sad, but you know, he he has a family to take care of, so I, under, I completely understood. Yeah, but, uh, you were down and 
Alex, uh, Brian said that you were okay with redshirting last year. How how tough was that though? I mean, I mean, I understood. You know, it was a mutual agreement for sure. Um, you know, obviously, I wanted to be on the field because freshman year I played, then got red shirt, so it was tough. But you know, everything happened for a reason. Have you seen the offensive line develop so far this spring? Oh, uh, you know, they're doing really good. Um, I feel like you know we got a group of older guys, veterans, so they're gonna be really good. Now, do you think? I mean, with this potentially being a longer season, potentially, hopefully guys to say do you think this could be a running back by committee type of offense? I mean, kind of carries, maybe, yeah. here I, I, could, I could see that, you know, yeah, because it's going to be longer season, so a lot of people going to be rotating in because you got to make it through the year, so we could possibly play 17 games. That's a NFL schedule, so, yeah. How do you feel like what you do complements what Travion does, what Quinchon does? I mean, you know, I feel like I'm kind of just unique, you know, like I have my own style, I don't, I just kind of stick to my style, like, don't try to be anybody else. So, yeah. How would you describe Last your, question. How would you describe your style? I feel like I'm a downhill runner, full speed, and I feel like that's probably my best two attributes, just being myself.